Hi guys, welcome back. This video is on antisense oligonucleotides. Antisense oligonucleotides, abbreviated ASOs, are a novel gene-based therapeutic technology that has the potential to alleviate or possibly cure a set of currently untreatable and progressive genetic diseases, including hereditary neurodegenerative disorders such as spinal muscle atrophy, Huntington's disease, and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease. Certain hereditary risk factors for coronary artery disease, such as lipoprotein A, may also benefit from this technology. Over the next few minutes, we're going to review the science behind ASOs and their potential role in the future of medicine. Before we get into the specifics of antisense oligonucleotides, we need to review a few definitions and some basic features of our own genetics, including DNA, mRNA, transcription, translation, positive sense RNA, negative sense RNA, nucleotides, amino acids, and proteins. Of these nine definitions, seven of them are directly related to mitosis, cell reproduction, and protein synthesis in our own bodies, which we will now review. In the human body, a parent cell divides into two daughter cells, splitting the cytoplasm and nuclear material equally between the daughters. The critical genetic material, or template, for each and every one of us is encoded in the double-stranded DNA within the nucleus of the cell. During division, this DNA needs to be perfectly replicated, with each daughter cell receiving an identical copy to carry out its assigned function. This is done through the process of mitosis, where the helical strand is unwound and each strand duplicated by pairing each of the four nucleotides labeled T, A, C, and G with its complementary base linking T to A, A to T, C to G, and G to C. With each daughter now complete with its full complement of DNA, it needs to start producing structural and enzymatic proteins to carry out its assigned duties and contribute to the functional activity of that particular organ or part of the body. This is done through ribosomes, an organelle in the cell cytoplasm that can read genetic material and translate that code into the necessary proteins that keep us all alive and functional. All ribosomes consist of two subunits, one larger than the other. Humans have 80S ribosomes consisting of a 40S and a larger 60S subunit. Our DNA never leaves the protection of the nucleus, but the information it contains needs to get into the cytoplasm of the cell where the ribosomes reside for translation into proteins. This is accomplished through RNA polymerase. In a process called transcription, RNA polymerase reads the coding strand of DNA and produces a complementary single-stranded messenger RNA, or mRNA, again using complementary base pairing. As before, C always pairs with G, G with C, and T with A in the mRNA strand. However, the A base in the DNA sequence is transcribed into uracil or U in the mRNA strand. This strand of genetic code is actually called pre-mRNA, and it contains both functional and non-functional segments of nucleotides referred to as exons and introns respectively. To make the final version of protein-forming messenger RNA, all the intron segments need to be removed from the genetic strand. Before leaving the nucleus, an enzyme called spliceosome excises the non-functional portions of the genetic code, leaving a string of functional exons in a process appropriately called splicing. Oversimplified in this graphic for the purposes of brevity, the actual process involves folding and splicing of the introns and joining of the exons in a contiguous strand to produce a fully functional messenger RNA or mRNA. This final version of mRNA then leaves the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm. The strand of messenger RNA encodes for 20 different amino acids, the basic building blocks of proteins. Specifically, every three bases encodes for one of the 20 amino acids. Hence, this grouping of three nucleotides is called a codon. The resulting linear strand of amino acids, or polypeptide chain, then fold into a complex three-dimensional structural or functional protein. In summary, DNA is the double-stranded genetic code that resides within the nucleus of all our cells. mRNA, or messenger RNA, is the single strand of genetic code 
produced by RNA polymerase from DNA that leaves the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm of the cell. Transcription is the process of producing mRNA from the DNA template, and translation is the process of producing proteins from messenger RNA in the cytoplasmic ribosomes. Nucleotides are the basic components of DNA and messenger RNA and are labeled C, G, T, A, and U. And the 20 amino acids are the basic building blocks of proteins organized into a polypeptide chain with three nucleotides encoding for one of the 20 amino acids. Finally, proteins are the three-dimensional folding of the amino acid polypeptide chain into functional structural and enzymatic organic molecules. The last two definitions can be graphically demonstrated with the infecting agent of COVID-19, the SARS-CoV-2 virus. SARS-CoV-2 is called a positive sense messenger RNA virus because the genetic code it contains within its core is structurally identical to our own messenger RNA. As such, the viral genetic strand can be read directly by our own ribosomes to make proteins. Once the virus passes through the outer membrane of our cells, forming an encapsulated vesicle, enzymatic lysosomes fuse with the vesicle digesting the structural proteins of the virus and releasing the viral genetic code into the cytoplasm of the host cell. Again, since the viral genome is positive sense messenger RNA, it can then be read directly by our ribosomes to make viral proteins. Remember, our messenger RNA is made in the nucleus of our cells. Therefore, we have no cellular machinery dedicated to the replication of messenger RNA in the cytoplasm. Without another piece of genetic equipment, each viral particle could only produce one copy of itself in our cell cytoplasm, not a very efficient mechanism of reproduction. Therefore, the SARS-CoV-2 virus dedicates the majority of its 30,000 base genetic code, two-thirds to be exact, to produce a large protein enzyme called RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, or RDRP. Through complementary pairing of adenosine, uracil, guanine, and cytosine, RDRP produces a negative copy of the virus genetic code, appropriately named negative sense messenger RNA. Because of structural differences, the negative sense strand of messenger RNA cannot be read by our ribosomes to produce viral proteins, but can be read again by the RDRP protein enzyme to produce a complementary positive sense strand of RNA. This copy is again structurally identical to our own messenger RNA and therefore can be read by our ribosomes to produce additional copies of both RDRP and viral particles, thus turning our infected cells into virus factories. From this example, we have defined both positive and negative sense messenger RNA. Now we can talk about the antisense oligonucleotide, or ASO. The moniker ASO is descriptive. Antisense is basically the complementary sequence to a portion of the encoding or positive sense messenger RNA string. Oligo means scant or few, and of course the nucleotides are the five organic molecules A, C, G, T, and U that make up the backbones of the mRNA and DNA strands. Using gene mapping, scientists have been able to identify the genetic loci or location responsible for a variety of genetic diseases such as spinal muscular atrophy, Huntington's disease, and lipoprotein A. For example, SMA is caused by a genetic mutation of the SMN1 gene located on chromosome 5 at locus 5q13. Huntington's disease is caused by a mutation in the HTT gene located on chromosome 4 at locus 4p16.3. And lipoprotein A is caused by a mutation in the LPA gene located on chromosome 6 at locus 6q26-27. Knowing the nucleotide sequence of these defective genes allows scientists to create a short strand of complementary or antisense RNA or DNA, about 15 to 20 nucleotides in length, that can bind specifically to regions of the mRNA molecule to either block or accentuate protein expression depending on the targeted segment of the pre-mRNA strand. Examples of both will now be demonstrated. 
Lipoprotein, little a, abbreviated LPA, is an independent and inherited risk factor for cardiovascular disease. Often resistant to standard cholesterol-mitigating therapies like statins, lifestyle alterations, and diet restrictions, the only current therapy that seems to significantly impact circulating LPA particles is regular apheresis, where the blood is pulled from the body through a large-bore catheter, filtered of the particles, and put back into the body through a second port of the same catheter. This is an obtrusive and time-consuming process that has to be performed weekly or bi-weekly to be effective and therefore is considered a last-resort therapy. Lipoproteins are the transport vehicles for fats and cholesterol through our bodies. The polar outer shell of phospholipids and free cholesterol is miscible in the plasma of our blood and the non-polar central core stores triglycerides and cholesterol esters. The entire sphere is then surrounded by a binding and tagging protein called an apoprotein, specifically apoprotein B in this example. LPA is a subtype of lipoprotein with an additional apoprotein A that binds to the apoprotein B via a single disulfide bond. Apoprotein A is characterized by a series of folded protein structures called kringles, and we know that the number of circulating LPA particles is inversely related to the number of kringles. So an individual with a higher number of kringles will have less LPA particles, and those with a smaller number of kringles, more LPA particles, possibly related to the decreased production time for the shorter chain apoprotein A strands. Since higher circulating LPA particles are associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke, any therapy that reduces the number of LPA particles should also reduce the risk of disease. Pelicarsin is an investigational ASO from Novartis currently in Phase three clinical trials to determine its efficacy and safety against LP little a. LPA is produced by the basic cells of the liver called hepatocytes. Again, the LPA gene is found on chromosome 6 at locus 6q26-27. Pelicarsin is a 20-base antisense oligonucleotide that binds to a specific segment of the messenger RNA derived from chromosome 6 in the hepatocyte of the human liver. This binding prevents the translation of the LPA gene into functional LP little a proteins by either directly blocking this segment of messenger RNA or additional degradation of the double-stranded RNA complex by RNase H. Either way, there is significant lowering of the absolute number of LPA particles in the blood. On the contrary, ASO therapy for spinal muscular atrophy, or SMA, allows expression of the otherwise suppressed SMN2 gene in affected individuals. Spinal muscular atrophy is a devastating neurodegenerative disorder that can, in the most severe cases, kill infants and children in the first few years of life, and in mild cases affect older patients later in life. Caused by a homozygous deletion in the survival motor neuron 1 gene, On chromosome 5q13, this gene produces SMN1 protein required for the long-term health of our lower muscle motor neurons. Without it, our neurons degenerate with progressive muscle weakness and eventual paralysis. Most of us have both SMN1 and at least one or more copies of the SMN2 genes. The SMN2 gene differs from SMN1 by a single substitution of thymine for cytosine on the 840th position on exon 7. As a result, during the process of slicing pre-mRNA to mRNA, exon 7 of 85% of SMN2 is removed from the final mRNA sequence producing a non-functional truncated SMN2 protein that is quickly degraded. The other 15% of SMN2 genes are complete with exon 7 and produce a small amount of functional SMN protein. Spinraza, or nusinersen, is an ASO therapy for spinal muscular atrophy that binds to the intron just after exon 7 in the SMN2 gene. ASO binding results in this segment being skipped by the spliceosome during the splicing process and thereby including the full SMN2 gene in the final mRNA sequence. 
As such, there is a detectable increase in the amount of SMN2 protein during translation, significantly improving lower motor neuron health and cellular survival. So, as you can see, ASO therapy modulates gene expression somewhere between transcription and translation in protein production and may have tremendous potential to treat or alleviate a number of genetically inherited disorders that currently have no effective conventional therapy. Of course, ongoing research will be needed to determine long-term safety and efficacy of this emerging technology. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.